Hello and welcome to another Retrocore AV and today we are going to be taking a look at a series of cassettes that I absolutely love and they were only released in Japan. That is the Axia brand. Oh I love Axia, I really do. I have many Axia cassettes. For example, we have the PS1 here, normal position. And then we have the PS1 Slim, also normal position. But just look at the size of those hubs. I love those hubs, they're so cool. Then we have the PS2. And then we have the PS2 Slim. And again, those hubs look amazing. These are chrome cassettes, by the way. And apparently, they are pure chrome. In fact, I did read somewhere that Axia only ever make pure chrome cassettes. And taking a look at the PS2 Slims, in person is something to behold. Just look at how beautiful that cassette is. Let me just take it out of here, out of the case. Just look at that, that is a beautiful cassette. I love these indents here, it just looks so cool. I mean, it's just a transparent cassette, but the text here and the massive hubs and these indents which are actually cut into the plastic, just give it something of a special appearance. I really do think it looks good. And of course, we got the lovely stripey leader on there as well. I do like these Axia tapes. And then we got other Axia tapes such as this. This is the AU1X. And again, this is a normal position cassette, but another very good cassette. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's also got the massive hubs in there. Maybe not as big as those hubs though. But we're not going to take a look at those Axia cassettes today. We're going to take a look at a special Axia cassette. So let's just put these up here. We will take a look at these in the future. Today we're going to take a look at this. Yeah, <laughs> you're probably wondering, what the hell is this? Well, that is Kyoko from Amazing Ikoku. One of my favorite animes of uh, all time. I don't really watch anime, but this one I really do like. Um, bit of a maniac when it comes to this, but there is a reason for her being on this cassette. Now, as you can see, it is just a normal cassette, but it is an Axia branded cassette, and this is the GT1X. Again, a type one position cassette. Now, the reason for her being on the front of here is due to a special um, campaign that Axia did back in the mid 80s. At this point, they actually started making Axia videotapes with a special uh, magnetic coating on them. And to promote that, uh, they worked with Bandai and did some sort of special cross promotion. And in return, Axia actually put out special limited edition cassettes featuring uh, characters from the animations of certain uh, animes, which actually had their videotapes released on Axia videotapes. Now, if we take a look at the actual cassette itself, it's just a normal branded uh, GT1X. There's nothing special about that. Um, but if you've not seen one of these cassettes, don't you think it's a pretty looking set? I do. I really do love the design of Axia cassettes. Even from the cool looking B down there, we've got a cool looking A. We've got this weird window here. We've got these little dots around. It just looks nice. And yeah, maybe not the quietest cassette out there, but it is a little bit creaky as well. Actually, I was gonna say it's well solidly built, but it doesn't seem to be that way, does it? But um, yeah, let's take a look at the actual cassette itself. So let's wind it on a little bit. The tape, I should say, not the actual cassette. Now this is a used cassette. So it may be full of dropouts. I have not tried this yet, but uh, yeah, taking a look at that. I hope you can see that in focus. Yeah, it's a basic brown looking cassette there, nothing too spectacular. Let's have a sniff. Hmm, <laughs> it's got a bit of a weird smell to it. Maybe it's due to age, but uh, we'll see how it performs. But uh, before we do that, let's take a look at the uh, inserts. So here's the sticker sheet. Not too sure what this uh, bit is about, but it's there nonetheless. 
standard stickers, nothing too special. On, on the back, we have some uh, Japanese text on how to handle your cassettes. All right, using the pencil there. And the insert, well, this one has been written on in Japanese. And um, I have actually have no idea if this is actually blank or not. I've not tried it. But as you can see, somebody has put cocktail music on it. I don't know if you can see that on the video. I hope you can. But yeah, cocktail music. Oh, it actually says Mason and Cocker up there. <laughs> nice. Um, so yeah, interesting. And according to this uh, case, it's actually a GT2X, but no, we just got a GT1X. So this is the sleeve from um, a metallic case, but uh, obviously they've given me the wrong tape with it. But I knew that it was like that on the auction. So yeah. And the special slip that you get is as plain as can be. We've got uh, some places to write the source and stereo and what noise reduction we have and so on and some area to write the text and whatever and on the front of it we've got the same thing here on the spine and space to write on here and the uh, nice cover of uh, Kyoko there some information down there of the uh, TV network that Mason Koku was broadcasted on okay but what we want to know is how well this pretty old mid 80s uh, Axia cassette performs. Let's stick it into the machine and find out. Okay, so let's plop in the tape and get it calibrated up. Now you may remember in the last video that I did, um, when I did the calibration on this, I had to put the bias all the way to the end and that was uh, with the Maxell UR tapes and the TDK AE tapes. So let's see how it biases up using the Fuji Axia tapes. Okay, so calibrate, everything's set to standard by the way. So calibration, okay, let's see. And look at that. It's practically there already and it's on standard. Hmm, so it looks like this deck prefers Sony and Axia cassettes. All right, uh, so first thing we've got to do is the bias. That's uh, what the instruction manual says to adjust first. Ooh, just a smidgen of bias, look at that. It's pretty much there. Just a smidgen more. Uh, all right, well, just just a smidgen, uh, that's pretty much there. Okay, and next we have to adjust the level. So uh, let's get that right. Yeah, a little bit back. All right, and then we're meant to re uh, adjust the record EQ level. Let's knock that down a little bit. A little bit more of the uh, record level there. Yeah, a little bit more. Look at that. that is pretty much spot on. So this, oh, it's gone up a little bit there, but yeah, that doesn't matter. Let's, let's just knock that down a little bit. All right, well, I, we're pretty much there. All right, okay. So the stick does like a, the Axia tapes much better than um, the TDK and the Maxell tapes. Okay, so I've got this device, oops, I just kicked the bin there. So I've got this device uh, connected up to the camera directly. So you're gonna be able to, able to hear the sound direct from the source and the tape. All right. Now, because I wanna give this a bit of a kick, I'm gonna play a classic Pet Shop Boys remix, 12 inch remix from Vinyl, and this is Somewhere.
was pretty impressive, wasn't it? That 80s Axia GT1X performed pretty well. I mean, it was picking a six at some points, and I think it did distort slightly on the base, but still, it went pretty high up. I like this tape. So what did you guys think about that? Not bad, eh? That was pretty good. And yeah, this is a used cassette. Now, it was lacking in the high end. I did notice there was a bit of high end missing there. But I didn't notice any dropouts. Uh, I was listening with the headphones on. Um, I didn't notice any dropouts at all. And for a Type 1 cassette of this age, yeah, not bad. I'd happily put some uh, good music onto that. Uh, whether I was playing good music just then is a matter of opinion. <laughs> I like it. Anyway, so yeah, that is the Axia GT1X. A pretty cool cassette. Even a used one still performs fairly well. Next time, we'll take a look at some more Axia cassettes. Or if you're interested, I've got some pretty nice Sony cassettes you might want to take a look at. Anyway, until next time, guys, take it easy and enjoy your music. Goodbye.